you didn't handle your business last week with skip counting part one, you're going to need to go and handle that business before you start messing with skip counting part two. Writing direct formulas for arithmetic sequences. This week we're going to look at the second piece. How do we figure out this blank? How do we figure out what to put in that blank so that we can actually complete the formula and use the formula? The assumption is going to be that you already know how to get this negative seven. You already know how to get the number that we're counting by. If you read what I put in orange, since the formula needs to work with every row, we can choose any row that's got complete information in order to figure out what the adjustment needs to be. Right? Whatever this formula ends up being, we need it to work with row one and with row two and with row three and with, with row four. That's the whole point of a formula. It works with every row. So I can choose any one row that has complete information. I can choose this top row. I can choose this third row. It's got complete information. When x is 13, negative 7 times 13 plus that thing we're looking for. When x is 13, f of x needs to be negative 6 if this formula is going to work with that row. f of x is negative 6 when x is 13. And then I'm just doing some math. Negative 7 times 13 is negative 70 plus negative 21, negative 91. Okay, in order to make this equation true, what do I have to put in the blank? I'm going to have to put add 85. That will make the situation true. Negative 91 plus 85 is negative 6, which means that my missing piece, my final piece to this formula is plus 85. And that is a complete formula. And having created a complete formula, now I can use the formula to fill in any other blanks that I left in the rows. So for example, when x is 9, okay, now let's do the mathematics. Negative 7 times 9 plus 85, enter. Get an answer. That's the answer that would, would fill in for the purple box. Negative 63 plus 85 is 22. When x is 9, f of x is 22. And this guy here, a little bit, a little bit tougher, a little bit more algebraic of a question. When f of x is negative 97, so negative 97 equals negative 7x plus 85, and I need to solve for x. So I'm going to need to subtract 85 from both sides. I'm going to have negative 182 equals negative 7x. Divide both sides by negative 7, and we're going to get x equals 26. Go from start to finish, we have figure 4, 5, 6, 7. All right, we're taking three steps. And going from figure 4 to figure 7, I'm increasing by 18 squares. That means that we're counting six extra squares per figure. And we can start to write a formula, squares equal 6 times the figure number, plus this thing I don't know. That's from last week. I want to find this thing that I don't know to finish out the formula. That formula needs to work with figure 4. When I have figure 4, what do I need to add so that the number of squares is 29? 6 times 4 is 24, plus 5 is 29. That's going to be the end of my formula. Squares equals 6 times f plus 5. If I'm not sure, I could always double check. Or I could have used the other figure. When squares is 47, then I need the number of figures to be 7. 6 times 7 is 42. Again, that thing I'm supposed to be adding is plus 5. You're always going to get the same thing. right? It doesn't matter which, which 
point or which data pair you use. And we get the same thing if we're dealing with an arithmetic formula. Use it, use the formula to find the number of squares needed for figure number 19. So now that I have my formula boxed in orange, I can just go squares equals 6 times figure 19 plus 5 and do the mathematics. 119 squares in figure number 19. Just as a side note, if you have a physical sequence, you can still, after finding the, and sometimes before finding the official formula, you can see where the formula comes from in the sequence. We've got, we've got six little strings of four red squares in, in figure number four. So that's our six times figure number four. And then we got these extra five blue squares to finish out the pattern. Same thing in figure number seven. We got six strings of seven red squares plus same five locations uh, for that adjustment that we make. We'll look at one more from start to finish. We haven't really looked at this context yet, but I'm sure you've seen problems like it before. Jasmine's Law Service charges a flat fee to come out to the house plus an hourly charge depending on how long it takes to complete all of the work. It took five hours to care for Mr. Blue's lawn, so he paid $88. Mrs. O'Range paid $39 when workers expended 1.5 hours trimming her lawn. Senor Verde estimates it will take three hours to care for his lawn. How much should he expect to be paying? Jasmine's lawn service, so much of the Algebra 1 curriculum boils down to this one ability, this one skill. Can I write a formula to match the situation? So let's see, we got money and we got time. Money and time. And we got five hours. We got 1.5 hours. And we got Three hours. When it takes five hours to care for the lawn, $88 charge. One and a half hours, $39 charge. Three hours, not sure. So we're going to ignore this bottom row for right now because we don't have complete information about it. So let's look at this. If I'm taking three and a half less hours. That corresponds to 40, 49 less dollars. That means that for each hour, each hour, the charge is $14. Formula will start like this. Money equals $14 times the number of hours plus some adjustment. I could choose either of these points to figure out what that adjustment is. I'm going to use the top point because no decimals to deal with. Money, when the money is $88, that means we've been working for five hours. 14 times 5 is 70. I need to add 18 to make this equation true. So that's my adjustment. There's our formula. All right, now we're ready to answer that question. Senor Verde estimates it's going to take three hours. So now that I have a formula, we want to know how much money will it cost for three hours for this lawn service. 14 times 3, 42, 52, 60. Senor Verde can expect to be paying 60 bucks. 